Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge and it's the last video for July. Well, hopefully I can get it edited and out by the end of July, maybe August 1st. Uh, August 1st is a holiday here. It's called Heritage Day in Alberta. We've got a knife by Shielden. This is the Empoleon. This was sent to me by Shielden Knives way back when they first started shipping knives under their own brand name. Uh, they started out as an OEM manufacturer making knives for other companies and they decided to make their own line of knives and this is one of them. This knife comes in two ways. Both of them are black G10 and you can either have a black titanium coated blade or this gray titanium coated blade and those are your choices. The designer is Django Design, same designer for all of Shielden's at least first runs of knives. We've got a flipper, liner lock, full-size knife, you know, a little bit on the, you know, thinner, lighter side. And I want to show you everything I know about it. Keep watching. Let's begin with the size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. There you go. Line up those pivot pins for you. Slightly smaller, not a lot smaller, but in every dimension it's smaller. We've got a thinner blade, we've got a thinner handle, you know, less handle depth this way, you know, less handle thickness, everything. Even the blade is, well, the blade starts off very much the same, but, you know, we've got a smaller knife. I'm calling it a full-size folder. It's just within that full-size folder range. We're going to go over all of the dimensions exactly later on in the video. It's over three inches in the blade. It's about three and a half from the tip to the handle. So yeah, it's a full size knife. This blade shape. Well, we've got a drop point here and then a nice belly, a long straight edge, full flat grind on here. The edges here are just very slightly broken. They're almost sharp, but they're not sharp on the edge. Uh, the badging on here, We've got the model number here, 9049G1G, and the other one is 9049G1B for black. My fingerprints still show up on this quite a bit. Now, there's one section here that looks a little bit darker, and I've not been able to clean that off. The badging on the knife, well, we've got shielding right there on the plunge, and then D2 right there. And on this side, like I said, the model number, and there it's Empoleon, and then Django, the designer's name, at least the badging is not too terribly big. A little bit more about the blade. We've got a back swept plunge and it's a fairly distinct plunge. You can of course see the starting line where it's the full thickness of the Ricasso. And then you can see the line coming down there for the end of the plunge for where the bevel is. And it just barely has a big enough sharpener soil. You just have to sharpen this thing two or three times and you're gonna be sharpening up into the plunge and that's gonna leave marks. On this side, you can't see, well, with the naked eye, you can just barely see one spot where when they did sharpen this at the factory, they touched the plunge. And that's why sharpener's soils need to be bigger than the plunge. I've talked about that a number of times. The action on this thing, well, we've got ball bearings in there, and I'll take it apart and show you those later on. The action's quite smooth. The flipper, it's one of those ones with sort of squared off edges, but it does have more chamfering than you have on the spine of the blade. There's you know three lines milled into the front there, like jumping. Light switch method works great. And pulling off to the side works fine as well. The detent on this knife is quite good, which is why you hear that release. And then it just has that thunk when it opens up all the way. Now that detent, let me show you it when we close. See, it's not too terribly strong, but it's a pretty good detent. When I just hold the handle of the knife and give it a hard swing, the blade does not come out. So that meets the centrifugal restrictions that we have in Canada. But because it's a flipper, chances are pretty good that Canada Border Services Agency would not allow this knife to come into Canada, at least not when it's intact all together like this. We'll lock up. It's pretty much exactly where I like a brand new knife to be, so that's quite good. The lock release, there's enough of a space cut out here so you can access that lock release. There's a spot there already. I don't know if you can see it in the light this way. When I move it, you can. See that glint right there? There's a spot there where the coating has already been wore off 
I would have liked if they would have put a chamfer on there. It's not terribly annoying to put your thumb in here to push that bar away, but it's a little bit of a crisp edge, and so it is mildly annoying to the thumb. It's not painful, but it's, you know, it could be nicer. That's a little thing that would have been easy for them to change on there. The alignment when it's closed, as you can see, it's not quite down the middle, but it's pretty close, so fair enough on that. There's no blade play side to side, up and down when it's locked, so that's quite good. The spine of the knife here, like I showed before, there's no jimping anywhere. I'd like some jimping, but it's okay. The flipper tab comes out far enough that there's a guard there. You can use this for plunging fairly safely because of the size of that, so you can go ahead and do that. Still a good idea to get your thumb over the end when you're going to be doing some stabbing motions. You know, either kind of grip. If you're going to stab this way, just make sure that your index finger is on there nice and tight so that your hand doesn't go over that blade. Into the handle now. We've got sort of like a candy bar style handle. By that I mean the spine of the handle and the belly of the handle are pretty much parallel. And then the ends are pretty much the same as each other as well. It's just like a candy bar. We've got this texture that they've milled into the handle scale. And then it's been polished after that. So that's actually quite nice. I like that handle scale. The, the milling, quite comfortable. Uh, the edges are just slightly rounded over. That's enough texture to you know give a little bit of hand feel. Certainly not annoying. And without it, the knife handle might look a little bit boring. And that adds a little bit of interest. But that's about all it does. It just adds some visual interest. We've got a backspacer. And the backspacer comes around most of the way. There's some big jimping on that backspacer. Then we've got the lanyard hole. It goes right through the backspacer. I wish they would have chamfered the edges of that hole a little bit. They're a little bit crisp. I put some paracord through there, and yeah, those edges they sort of grab onto the paracord a little bit. A bit of a chamfer would have been nice. Next, the hardware. We've got T6 button screws. I don't like T6 button screws on knives to start with. And then when they're a little bit cheap quality, that's kind of risky, so I strongly advise that you get some of this stuff, drive grip. It used to be nice and cheap on Amazon, but I've got some links. I think I've got some links for eBay, or you can search on your own at eBay for some drive grip. Anti-cam out fluid. Uh, you put it on your screwdriver tip, or you put it there on the screw head, and then when you go to screw it, it's much less likely to strip out. You still have to be very careful when you're using T6 screws especially when they're soft, but that really does help. We've also got T6 screws on the pocket clip, but these have that titanium coating on them, along with the same pocket clip. The pocket clip is not a deep carry clip. I really wish it was, but it's not. That's about seven eighths of an inch of the knife sticks out of your pocket. That's about two and a half centimeters. So if you're okay with that, then this can be okay. And in that case, these button screws offer some grip to help you pull it out of the pocket. I'll show that in a minute. Then the pocket clip comes down and then it steps up and flattens out kind of like a, you know, a snake head. I like that it's flat up there, but it's a little annoying in the hand when you're using it for an extended period of time. It is a right side only pocket clip as well, but in the hand, when you're using it for quite a long time, just that little spot right there gets a little tender, a little annoying there. It's not painful. It's just a little annoying in the hand. That's partly because of how small it is this way. So it's just more of a small spot of contact that pushes in. So just so you're aware of that, not a big deal, but it's there. Let's demonstrate it going into a pocket. That little spot climbs over every time, push it in, and there you go. And like I said, seven eighths of an inch sticking out. But the retention's quite nice. You know, the spring is good and strong. It's quite decent. How well did it perform in my cut tests? It performed okay. It's not too thin behind the grind, but it's, it's thin enough to be useful. And that tip comes down to a thin enough point to puncture quite well. It's an okay cutter and slicer and piercer. Doesn't excel at any of those, but it doesn't fail at any of those either. It's pretty good. I forgot to introduce this. Yeah, we saw it in the unboxing video. This is the Shielden belt pouch. We've got a belt loop here. There's a snap to make it a little bit easier to put it on. 
And we've got some elastic here to expand, like for different size knives and things. It's a little bit small for this knife. Uh, the flap has got some Velcro on it to hold it closed. One more thing that I want to show you before we take it apart, this right here. We've got a T8 screw head on either side, and then we've got a pivot collar. What I found odd about this, that pivot collar, it's flush right here. The G10 you know, comes up nice and flush to the pivot collar, but on the sides, it's exposed. You know, you're sliding your finger or whatever along the G10 and it bumps into a hard edge on that pivot collar. And it's worst right about there. So the G10, you know, they chamfered it all the way around, but they didn't do it evenly with where the pivot collar would be. So on both sides, you've got a crisp edge right there. Is it a problem? No, it just shows a little lack of attention to detail. Now let's take this thing apart and we're going to find out if that's a D-shaped pivot pin or not. So we do have a round pivot pin. Now I did not need two screwdrivers to take it apart. And this pivot screw, it's pretty good quality. We've got ceramic ball bearings in a you know nylon or plastic cage right here. Pretty smooth action, that's okay. We've got that captured stop pin right here. So that's okay, especially since it's got a closed front. If somebody's going to do a captured stop pin, I prefer it to be closed like that. That means with this metal going all the way around, so dirt and grime has a little more difficult time getting in there. A little bit of skeletonizing on this side. I wish that would have been a little bit bigger, or they might have added some over here. I didn't show the balance point yet. The balance point's okay. I'll show that just after. Let's take this uh, backspacer off if we can. But you can see right there, these have shoulders on them, which means... You can use this knife without a backspacer. Some people don't like it, backspacers. And there you go. Then there's no backspacer. And then the balance point is a little bit better than it was before as well. All right, so I've put it back together again. And I used Gunny Glide. The action is even smoother now than it was before. It's just awesome. And the balance point, like I said, that's right there. When you take the backspacer off, it moves it a tiny bit. Time for all the sizes, dimensions, specs, and stuff. The weight of this knife, 89 grams. That's 3.4 ounces, not bad. The sharpness from the factory, I got a score of 120 best, slightly better than average. The cutting edge length from the thumbnail to thumbnail here, 86.3 millimeters, 3.4 inches. Blade length tip to the closest spot on the handle, 88.8 .8 millimeters, 3.5 inches. The thickness of the blade, 2.93 millimeters, 0.115 of an inch, so just a bit under an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, its biggest right there, the widest point, 19.4 millimeters, 0.764 of an inch. How thin is it behind the grind? Measured in three places and averaged out, 0.48 millimeters, 19 thousandths of an inch, so that's okay. The grind angles. This side's got an average score of 17.6 degrees. This side's got an average score of 15.6 degrees. Uh, this side started at 16 degrees, went to 15 degrees, ended at 15.9 degrees. One degree of change along the length, so that's not bad. This side started at 16.4 and kept it two-thirds of the way down, and then the last little bit went to 20.0 degrees. That's an angle change of 3.6 degrees in this last third of an inch. More measurements. The handle, 116.4 millimeters, 4.58 inches long. The grip area between my thumbs, it's a little bit under 10 centimeters or 4 inches. Just a little bit under both those numbers. The thickness of the handle, we do have a slightly rounded G10, so right down the middle of the handle scales on the G10. 12.6 millimeters, which is 0.496 of an inch. The handle, the, this measurement, it's pretty much the same all the way along here. 20.3 millimeters, 0.8 of an inch. When the knife is closed, the widest point is with the flipper here. 26.2 millimeters, 1.03 inches. And the total length of this knife from end to end, 205 millimeters, 8.07 inches. So three and a half, four and a half. Pretty good proportions. Where can you buy this knife? Well, it's available in the black 
titanium coating at White Mountain Knives. They've got it for $52.99. You can save 10% there with coupon code CCE for Canadian Cutting Edge. That makes it $47.69, about $62 Canadian. That's the best price I could find. That is, after the discount, that's the best price I could find. In the United States, you can also go to AtlanticKnife.com or ChicagoKnifeWorks.com, and they have both colors, you know, the black or the gray coated blade, for $49.98. So basically 50 bucks, 50 American dollars for this knife, and you can save, you know, almost two and a half dollars by shopping at White Mountain Knives. I like it. It's pretty good. It's got good action. I like the texture on the G10. Uh, it cuts fairly well, decent at piercing, fairly safe at doing that. D2 steel, yeah, I can leave it. I'm not that big of a fan of D2 steel on pocket knives. Is D2 good? Yeah, it's good, but I'm not a big fan of it. That's, that's all. I'd rather have a stainless steel. As we've seen on this knife coatings, you know, it's a little uneven with that little slightly darker spot there and it, the coating comes off and then that leaves shiny spots. So I'm not a fan of coating. Now, did the coating wear on the blade? Well, in the cut test I did, the coating, you know, withstood that and there's no scratch marks on here anywhere. But, you know, I can only do so much testing. I don't know how long that's going to last, but it did do okay in my testing. That's the good stuff. What are the okay things about this? The balance point is okay. I would like it closer to the pivot, but it's okay. And you can change it with that backspacer. The lock release is okay, but I prefer a little bit of a chamfer on it. Blade alignment, it's okay. It's not touching anywhere. It's not even close to touching anywhere, but it is a little bit off to this side. So there's some okay stuff. The sharpness choil is just barely big enough. That's okay, but it's not really good either. The things I don't like, cheap T6 button screws. Now these, there are worse T6 button screws out there in the marketplace, but I still wish these were better. I'd prefer a deep carry pocket clip. That for me is somewhat important. Spot here on this clip, that's a little bit annoying. Yeah, I don't like that, that's a negative. I don't like coated blades and I already talked about that. And just the little bit lack of finesse on here, like the stuff with this pivot collar not fitting nicely with the G10. I think they could have done better with that, especially when this knife is 50 bucks. You know, I'm a budget knife guy, so I have to compare these things to like companies like Ganzo, who have more finesse and better quality. Unfortunately, they're using a lot of D2 these days as well but then their knives come in close to half this price. So I'd like better at this price point, but it's not like this is bad. So I think you got a pretty good idea of what I think of this thing. Please use the links that I have down below. I've got links for all kinds of things. If you wanna go shopping on Amazon, I've got referral links down there. If you use my links to open your Amazon window and then shop, no matter what you shop for, I earn a tiny commission but it adds up over time. Now, I want to get a uh, another lens for a camera uh, so I can get even better video. Uh, there's some other things I want to get for the channel, and it all comes from you guys. Either you go to patreon.com slash cce and you support the channel, or you click the join button down below the video and you support the channel, or you do things like using my referral links. All those things help me out an awful lot. If you're in the market for some tools, screwdrivers and things, there's a link for KC Tool down below in the description as well, and referral links down there for all kinds of stuff. So check that out. Thank you very much. Thank you to my financial supporters. I really appreciate your monthly support. It's just about time to do another giveaway in just a few days. So one of you people is going to win their choice of knives that I reviewed last month or during July. So. Good luck to you all. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.